Hello everyone, this is Jozef Not here, and welcome back to the second part of the video where I'm talking about Multiface Simulation Project. In the first part I gave you a short introduction into the problem and what we will do, and now we will start with the tutorial. As you see, I'm doing this in Windows 10. Now I'm rather sure that once you saw the first video, then some of you might not like the fact that I'm doing this in Windows 10, but there is an, uh, actually just a few differences that we have to consider. And what I saw that you guys are mostly watching my tutorials in Windows, from Windows. Uh, consistently 57% of you are watching my videos from Windows and only I think 25% are, uh, are watching it from Linux. So I thought to myself, if you are watching my videos in Windows, then I might just show you how to do so you can just run it in Windows without having to, to run it in uh, on a second laptop or in a virtual box. But if you're watching this video in Linux and you're running your simulations in Linux, just go along. You, you have to execute mostly the same um, commands. And if there are differences, then I will say, say so. And you can run the simulations in Windows 10 and you won't do no problem there. So let's start with the simulations. Okay, so I in my tips video, I showed you how to open up Paraview, the Windows version of Paraview or the Linux version of Paraview in Windows 10. I created an alias for that in Bash RC. So if I now type in Paraview and then this will open up my Windows 10 version of Paraview as you see here. So if I go in the I'm now in the tutorial folder, my documents, and then filling of tank, filling of tank, and now in geometry. If I open up the four STL files, then let's take a look at them, what's happening there. Okay, so let's make this bigger. Yes, that's what she said. And that is what the geometry looks like. So we have an inlet in the bottom here and through this inlet we will inject our water in through this pipe into our tank which looks like this and at the top at the top we will have an outlet, an atmospheric outlet. So this is the ST, these are the STL files that we will use to create our mesh. Okay, nothing really spectacular there. So let's go back to the terminal. In Ubuntu to your terminal here in Windows 10 to the bash on Ubuntu on Windows. Okay, so let's go into the mesh folder and let's create here the mesh. And the point here is that, as I mentioned in the first video, I set up here a, a script which will open up the most important dictionaries that you will need for your mesh setup. So this, what, what is this? If I open this up in here, this is nothing else than a simple bash script which opens up gedit and a couple of files. You can open up them up by hand, of course, or you can just start the script. Now for Ubuntu, you don't have to do anything. For Windows, I found that you have to add here um, the path to your gedit executed. So I will do this now, C, and then it's in my case in gedit and then in bin gedit oops dot x and now this should open up the files in 
the Windows version of gedit. Okay, so you can do this, you can open them up in, by hand as you want, you can use this script if you want, but you don't have to. You can just do it in VI or Nano as you want. So if I type in sh setup mesh and this should now open up gedit exactly as you see and the most important files that you need for case setup from left to and we will now go through them from left to right from the top to the bottom this is the approach that i want to show you and this is what i meant with systematically going through the files and with a couple of comments that i um, enter so this is a typical block mesh dictionary here as you see and here these vertices define the block below it envelops the STL file. Usually, you sh this uh, block should be bigger than your STL file. So maybe let's just go back and open them up again. I'm sorry, but this may be important. So we have now our STL files. So a block, the idea with Snappy Hex Mesh is that you have a starting mesh which should be made up by hex cells. So we will create this with block mesh and then along these STL files, we will, or let's just say uh, like that, snappy hex mesh will refine your block mesh around these STL files. And then at a certain point, everything that is outside of these STL files will be thrown away. And we will define what the inside and the outside means. We can refine it, we don't have to. Let's see how that works. Okay, so this is the STL file. And with this, we now um, define a bounding mesh. As I mentioned, this should be bigger than this geometry. You can see here, for example, the tank goes from minus 0 0.5 until plus 0 0.5. So it's one meters wide and long. And it has also a height of one meters. So we use this block. So it goes from minus 0 0.5 to plus 0 0.5. And it starts at the inlet and it goes until the outlet. So in this case, because the geometry is so simple, we the box is as big as the STL files. Sometimes it's a very good idea to make it make this block a little bit bigger. Okay, so and then we say how big our block mesh or, or the, how, uh, what the, uh, the coarseness of the block mesh should be. So if we make a very very coarse mesh here. And we save this now. Let's see what happens. Okay, so this is a very, very coarse mesh. As you see, 10, 10, and 15, very coarse. But then in the second phase, uh, Snappy X Mesh will search for features. And these features are edge, edges of your STL file. And then Snappy X Mesh will try to refine around these edges and for that we have to create edge files we, and with that we extract the edge files from the STL and we did do this with a certain command which is called surface feature extract and we have an additional dictionary for that where we define the STL files and then what do we want to extract? In this case, we will we enter here uh, an angle of 180. So we use all the edges of this STL file. And as you see, we have here an inlet STL, an outlet STL, pipe, and a tank. So you have to enter here all your STL files. If you have a different names naming system for your pro project, then you have to change this here. And maybe I want to mention uh, this at this point. With the STL files, we predefined our boundaries for later. So my suggestion for you is to create your geometry wherever you want to create it. And then you separate 
that geometry into separate STL files. You can use one STL file and then uh, define the boundaries within that STL file, but uh, not every CAD tool is capable of doing that. So watch out. I think as for, as for a newcomer, this is a very good approach to create separate STL files and predefine already at geometry creation stage the boundaries for later on. But in this file, we just say, okay, take these STL files, inlet, outlet, pipe, and tank, and extract the edges. And then we define the snappy hex mesh entries, the, the, the actual entries for snappy hex mesh. In the top, we have a couple of entries, and now you see my name, my comments. Usually you have a lot of comments in a snappy hex mesh dictionary. And feel free to add your own insights. So I call myself J, J and N here. Type in your own ideas, your own um, experiences regarding Snappy X machine and also later on the initial values, the simulation setups, and stuff like that. Okay, so we start here with castellanated mesh. I'm not sure if this says something to you. As I mentioned, we will refine the geometry around a certain um, STL um, file, as you saw before in Paraview. And with that, at the first point, we will just refine the mesh. And what we will end up with is a kind of Lego mesh. So it, it uh, the, the hexes will, if you have a curved surface, they will not fit perfectly. So you have, you have a kind of Lego mesh. And then in a second phase, we can snap this Lego mesh closer to the STL file. In this case, we will not use it because we have a, this uh, tank, so we don't have to uh, snap it. But uh, for a more complicated geometry for uh, Curve geometry, it is very good, a uh, very, very good idea and very important to say here instead of walls that this is true. And you can also add layers, but as I mentioned, this is not a snappy X mesh tutorial. I just want to cover the most important entries here. Then we defined which STL files we want to use for the mesh. So we use inlet STL, outlet STL, pipe STL, and tank STL. So all of the four STL files. And then we say, okay, we from now on, we will call inlet.stl inlet. We can just, we could just say blah. But then afterwards, for all the entries, we would have to use blah. To, conf to avoid confusion, we just say inlet. And also for outlet STL, we call it outlet, <coughs> pipe, and tank. And then there are a couple of important entries here. For example, max local cells. This is important for parallel meshing. We will not use that at this point. This is important. Max global cells. We do not want to exceed 2 million cells. We will not. But this is important because you might be get too overzealous with your refinement and say, yes, I want to refine it up to seven or eight refinement levels. And then Snappy X mesh will just refine, refine, create more cells. And then the Snappy X mesh will increase in your RAM memory. And then at a certain point, you will reach your maximum RAM and then your laptop or your PC will just crash <laughs> and that's not the best. So with this, you can limit this, but this is not just a guiding value. It can be exceeded. So watch out. This is just a rough estimation of your maximum number of cells. Then here, n cells between levels. This is the number of cells between different levels. We will not use this here, but if you, for example, we wanted to use a very fine mesh along the inlet and then a coarse mesh somewhere else, then we could enter different refinement levels and then the Snappy X mesh would make a transition from the different uh, 
levels of refinement and then we would have approximately 10 cells in each refinement level. But this is a, again maybe um, entry for a specific tutorial for Snappy XMarsh. Okay, and now we come to the features. Now we come to the refinement level. So in features, these are the edges that we extracted with this dictionary in surface feature extract dict, and they are called emesh. And these files define now the edges. And at this point, we do not want to refine them further. We want to use the entries here, uh, the, the refinement that we define with the initial block mesh. But we could change this at a later point. And then we come, so these are the edges, and here at refinement surfaces, now we use the, the STL files. And now these entries have to correspond to the entries here at the top. So inlet. So if we would use instead of inlet blah, we would have to write here in the bottom also blah. We don't do that, we use inlet, but here we can change we could change 0, 0 to 1, 1. Later maybe. And then one of the most important entries is this location in mesh. And this defines now your inside. With this, we define a point in the geometry, and then we say this point is inside the geometry, so throw away all the cells that are outside. And this point is in the center, as you see. Wait, let me open up the geometry. This is here at the center of the pipe, where the pipe connects to the tank. Okay, so and then we could, we don't use snap controls, but if you have a, a um, curve geometry, then you might play around with these entries, but I found, find to be, uh, you were, them to be very useful for 90 or 95 percent of my at least my snappy hex mesh meshes and then if you want to add layers this is where you can change that as you see i just took uh, the tutorial the flange tutorial for that so this is where we'd have to change some entries if you we wanted a layers for turbulence simulations. This is a laminar simulations. We do not want to do that. And we use standard mesh quality entries. And our foam dot foam. This is what I mentioned in the previous video. So here you now find the commands that you need to run Snappy Hex Mesh to create a mesh. What do we do? Here we copy the STL from some geometry in constant tree surface. If I go to my mesh folder in constant, we don't, we just have a tree surface folder and there we don't have anything. So we want to copy that in from the geometry file. So we have to be in mesh. And then what I will do, I will copy this and with the right mouse button you can paste in bash on Ubuntu on Windows and this will now copy the STL files into tree surface as you see now we have it there this is the first step then we execute surface feature extract you can copy it or you can just type in surface feature extract I find the copy paste solution more uh, easier surface feature extract and what this does we now have in constant and ex extended feature edge mesh and in constant tree surface we have now both the STL files and the emesh files which we and the emesh files are used for to this uh, to define the edges. Okay, so these are the two first two commands that you need and then we create a block mesh, then we create block mesh with block mesh, enter, and now let's take a look at the block mesh. So we are in geometry at this point, let's open up with phone the 
block mesh and this is what it looks like. As I mentioned, this is enveloping the geometry and it is rather <laughs> coarse, but this is what our block mesh now looks like. Now let's create the actual mesh that we want with the command snappy hex mesh minus override. Okay, so I copy this, I execute it. Now this, and if I now press refresh, hopefully this, ah, no, you see something happen. This did not refine anything, but it um, created a mesh inside and outside. Uh, it took the mesh from inside and throw, threw out everything that was outside. Now, as you see, this was so coarse that the length of the pipe is not correct. So what we could do, we could go back to Snappy X mesh. We could increase here the zeros to one, all the entries to one, or we could add change one, one, and here also one, one, or what we can also do, we can just go back to block mesh and then change the, the initial refinement to a higher value and then just go with that. Since I'm a lazy person, I will do that. And I already had here the correct Verse, uh, entries for the coarse mesh. So we will now redo the mesh and create a finer mesh. So we will use the block mesh dict here. And now what we have to do, I would suggest you to remove poly mesh. Now we don't have to copy the STL files because we already have them in constant tree surface and we already have the e-mesh file. So all we have to do now is execute block mesh and snappy hex mesh. Block mesh. And now let's execute snappy hex mesh. And now a very important point, if we want to remesh, and now you can add your own remarks to your the files. So for remeshing, what did we do? We removed constant poly mesh and then we executed block mesh and snappy X mesh. So if you want to remesh, retry, you then you go to the file that you want to modify, you save, and then you execute rm in this constant poly mesh, block mesh, snappy X mesh. This is how you remesh if you're not satisfied with the refinement. And then in Paraview, you can just click refresh. And now you see we have a finer mesh. We only have four cells over the width of the pipe, which is not the best. I can guarantee you that the results here are not grid convergent, but for this tutorial, we say this is our grid uh, coarse mesh and we can live with that. Okay, so, what I will do now, we now created a coarse mesh. Before we start with the simulations, I will stop recording now, maybe even have lunch, and then I will come back and start with the simulations. With that, I hope that you liked the second part of this tutorial and that you learned something. I would like to thank you for watching and listening and I hope to see you in the third part of this tutorial.